Good morning viewers. Welcome to another episode of Wholeness Africa. Today we have the founder of Wholeness Africa on our hot seat. Welcome Israel. Thank you so much yeah, for having me. Yeah. So could you tell us more about yourself? Well, my name is Israel. You have just called me. I am uh, a Nigerian passionate about having Nigerians become liberated yeah. from mind sleep. Uh, slave masters have left our soul for over 60 years. So many of us have got independent for over 60 years now. But there is this uh, slavery that still engulf our hearts, our mind, our thinking. And I think it's high time we stand up against that as well and liberate ourselves from the slavery of the mind. And also, I am extremely passionate about seeing homeless street children become uh, individuals who discover develop their own talent and then uh, become what they desire to become on earth okay so can you tell a bit more about what wholeness africa stands for and what do they do yes owners africa as you have as you have asked me uh owners africa is talking about is focusing about liberating africa from slavery of the mind um over, over the years african has lived their life perpetually under slave masters and then since there are a physical end to slavery in Africa there has been no significant mental slavery in Africa and so there is a need for us to confront it the same way our funding founder confronted physical slave masters we also need to confront the mind slavery and then the mind slavery is more powerful than that of the physical slavery because physical slavery will quickly get people to arouse and, and demand and request for their freedom because they can see it right they can touch it they can feel it so and the man has this desire for freedom all the time but when the slavery moves from physical to mental it becomes difficult to eradicate because people will not even know they are enslaved um so Owners Africa is trying to arouse that yearning, desire, bringing the truth to the face of Africans. Let them know what slavery has done to them mentally and how they can also liberate themselves. I cannot liberate anybody. I am not capable of doing that. But what about I become a catalyst and they, I use the word high because there are so many other people also who are doing the same thing. I join the host of others who are doing the same thing to say, hey guys, think why what is this raising critical questions and challenging our status quo that is exactly what always africa is about okay great so we have seen many videos of you on social media and uh, among all the other thing, all the other things so why do you tell hell with grace Can you yes explain it? yes uh, the last the, the last topic i dealt with last week was about to hell with grace yeah and then this is a very vital issues as far as Nigeria, Africa is concerned. Grace is a very vital issue. And so, how did we define grace? Is a problem I have. I believe there is all of us are endowed with grace. I believe there is a grace that all of us are endowed with. But the definition we give to grace is what I'm saying here to here to that grace that we allow. 40 people die in an accident and only one person will be saved and this one person will go and say holy grace save me hey to that grace that will say that it could save everybody right in the accident but he chose to save one person just because the person has found grace what about those that died what did it, what did those people do to grace that he could not save them or he did not save them? Hey to the grace that could have saved children from diseases Malaria that are killing thousands of children, typhoid that was killing thousands of children, and the grace could not save them, but it will eventually save two or three children, that's as they call it, anyways. That grace find my child find a grace, and then die, but they've forgotten that it was prompt response to the sicknesses of the child, taking the child to hospital that make the child become that save the child from the disease. And so they will say, Grace, save me. But Grace was looking at that innocent children who does not even sin any, have any sin and allow them to die. And so I said, if this is what the de definition of Grace is all about, 
if this is what grace is all about eh, to that grace. but let me say before I, I allow you to ask me next question that I also believe in grace but what kind of grace do I believe in I believe in grace that has appeared to all men grace that has given all of us nature grace that we can all access sunlight grace that we can all accept plants we have access to the soil to the ocean to oxygen there was no discrimination in between all these things grace does not give you oxygen and deprive me grace give everybody everybody everything i believe in the grace that gave all of us 24 hours it didn't give you 40 hours and give you 24 hours because you are special that is the kind of grace i know that is what grace is all about because grace does not segregate but when people live in a society where circumstances of their actions or, or inactions bad government lead to many other things they think grace is the one favoring them and destroying others no it's a system you have in place that is causing issues that you face day to day in your society mm -hmm. interesting so i have a follow-up question to this Go so we have seen you comparing the prophets of uh, bible and quran with african leaders so what what have you uh, talk about it what is yeah okay uh, you know i have not started fully on that i am still working uh towards this i am and what africa should be expecting is more than what they've seen so far i just saw yesterday uh comparing them and the people are like oh wow some people are loving their people are so crazy i said wow that's good some people are saying nonsense are you calm down let me explain to you see africa was never short of leaders african have experienced leaders who are committed who are interested and who are dead act to see the liberation of africa just like a moses fought for the deliverance of israelite in egypt there were africa who put their life down for you to be to be delivered from the colonial masters they are not inferior to the leaders or the heroes of the Jew or, or, or Arab. But the difference between two of them is some took the story of their past leaders, they pack it into a book and they call it the book given by God. It's a story of men who actually exist like you and I. They existed on earth like just you and I. But some people took their story because of extraordinary things they've done, they put it in a book. And they said this is the book this book is given to us by god and so the word of those people when you read it, you say wow this is a wise word right this is a word of wisdom right wonderful but nobody has ever taken time to look at what did kwema Nkrumah said about africa and africa heritage what was the word of um Selassie about the utopians what was the word? What was the work of Hawulawa, Inambi Azikwe, Amadu Belo? These are leaders whose word also, if you have been put in a book, I will call it Africa God giving book, compared to the wisdom you are deriving in Quran or you derive in Bible, they are never inferior to all of them. But they told us that the work of our own forefathers are not to be looked into. In fact, we should go and learn it in school as, a, as an history. And, but the word, the book called religion book, supposed to be consumed. In fact, we were made to believe that the, in it lies the life. That is, when you read this book, you will have access to the life of God. And that was the mentality that Africa was giving, that were made to believe. And that's why we therefore does not know who, who are the heroes of Africa. What did they do? These are prophets who are spoken about what Africa is passing through today. One of the things that Africans have not realized is when they read the Bible, they see things that have been said by some prophet in the Bible and they are coming to pass now. But Africa have never asked themselves, has there anything that my forefather has said that has coming to pass? Almost all their words, as if they know what the future carries, all their words, word for word, are coming to pass now. We never see them as prophets. We see them as just <clears throat> one man. Mm -hmm. Africans were not journeying hungry to know their whole roots, to know the works of their father. How would the father define their own land? What was the definition of their father about education? 
Africa was told to believe in democracy that is being defined by either England or France. And so we we work according to the way democracy is being defined by them. But leaders of Africa have sat down and many of them have defined what democracy should be to Africans. But we never take time to listen to them. I'm comparing these people not because I said those who are the heroes of Israel, they are inferior. No. But I'm saying Moses, who led people out of the uh, slavery and led his people to promised land, is not superior to those who have stood their ground and defended their land, fought the colonial masters with their life, who have demanded for democracy, the freedom of Africans. They are never inferior to Moses. And so, if I'm to study the life of Moses, there's nothing that stops me not to swallow the life of Kwame Nkrumah, Esalas, Syria. These are leaders who have sacrificed their life for Africans. They have no other life. They fought the freedom of Africans. And so, Africans leader, African parents will enroll their children in, uh, what do they call it, Quranic school. To go do what? To go study Quran. And in that Quran is merely the story and the history of Arabians, people who founded Islam. And their works, like I call it thesis. It's just the record of their works. Nigerians, Africans, we make sure their children attend Bible study every Sunday. Just to know about Elijah. Elijah. Just to know about many prophets who have existed in the, in, in, in the time past in Hebrew. But none of them has ever been told about Sagula Kayo Shimole. The man I mentioned, if you mention it in, as I'm mentioning right now, many people will call me Debu. But they don't know that what Sagula Kayo Shimole stands for is not different from what Elijah stood for. They never knew that these people were also extra individual humans among us. At the time they existed and so we are supposed to discard them i am not supposed to read about uh uh uh, uh obatata these are men who could see beyond the physical heights i am not supposed to read about them because when i read about them that means i'm no longer a christian and i have this to say that i believe in god i believe in salvation of the world but I also believe that every nation was passing through their own level of paganism, ignorance at a time when we were all at that level. And no one should tell me, reading the story of Hebrews, memorizing what happened within them, is the word of God. And what God did through my own leaders, my fathers, were not word of God. That is exactly why I started this movement. And I'm just starting. Because where I'm going taking them to is their means. Okay. Thank you so much. Don't forget to follow me on all my platforms, Wholeness Africa Initiative, particularly subscribe to my channel, Wholeness Africa Initiative channel. You can use at Wholeness Africa to search for it. I will be bringing to your desktop the story, the history, the life, the work of past African leaders. Till we get that understanding, I will not stop. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>